Porque ele ficou outro das, dos problemas. So you are given an array of integers, numbers. And there is a sliding window of size k which is moving from the very left of the array to the very right. You can only see k numbers in the window each time. The sliding window moves right by one position. So what's a sliding window? Uh, anyone knows what is a sliding window? It should define it here in the, in the question, but it didn't. So that's a bad thing. Sliding window is like we we will have a left pointer or right pointer, so yes. we will move one step uh, towards right, uh, and we move one step towards uh, like inwards and out outwards. The right pointer will move outwards, the left pointer moves inwards based on some yes. condition. Yes, yes, right. Okay, good. Um, yes, let's let's visualize it here. So there will be one number overlapping with each and every window. Yes, that's true. Uh, not each and every window, because we could have a window of size one. Okay, if I have a window of size one, there there won't be any any overlap. Yeah, I mean, uh, when the window is three, I mean, one of the numbers will be repeated. Yes, it will be overlapping like one or two times. Yeah. So if it's yeah. three, it will be overlapping three times. Okay. Uh, so if I have an array here, array of some random values, I won't write any values here. So the problem says to us, so. Let's say quickly what is a sliding window. So a sliding window here, it's an expression. So it's, it's a word con corresponding to, if we have two pointers, one pointer at the right corresponds to this cell. Pointer means I have, I am storing some index at, at, at variable J, okay? And left pointer is here at this index. So here I'm calling it, window window of size like i said before this window is of size j minus i plus one okay so it has exactly one two three four cells um, and sliding window means that we will move this window one cell at a time okay so and the first time this window is here from i to j the second time it will be from here and delete this cell, so the window will be like this, okay? Third time, it will be extended from the right and shrink from the left. So the window will extend what uh, will extend one cell from the right and shrink one cell from the left, okay? So what, what is done here is if I am at i and j, if I'm at i and j, then I'm making j++ each time and i minus minus each time okay so j is increased by one i is decreased by one until i reach the last window here okay i i plus plus right e is also incremented right I plus plus. so j is incremented and i is decremented okay no i will also be incremented it has to move uh, yeah uh, yeah 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 sorry i is incremented and j is incremented yeah, 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 true, sorry. So I'm just incrementing everything. I'm incrementing J by one and I by one. So the left pointer goes to the right one cell, the right pointer goes to the right one cell. Okay, sorry. And if I reach J at the last cell, then uh, I will not continue. This is our last window. J cannot be greater than N. Okay, so this is a window of size four. So this window of size four, a sliding window of size four, would be sliding from from exactly the fourth cell, so from the first cell to the fourth cell until the last cell. Okay, this is a sliding window of size four, I guess. Yes. So what the problem asks 
here is we have a sliding window of size k. Um, return the max sliding window. And also the problem here doesn't define what does it mean return the max sliding window. And this is a bad statement, I know. Uh, but from the examples, I knew what does it mean here. So it, mean, it meant return the maximum integer at each sliding window. Okay, so the max sliding window is is ambiguous. So here, for I looked at this um, at this example here, and I saw here we have this array starting from one, ending at seven. We have the first window here. So this is one array. Okay, so here is our first window, and the maximum number in it is three. So it it prints three. Uh, for the second window, it moves to the right. The maximum number is three, it prints three. The third window, the maximum number is five, it prints five, and so on, okay? Here, the maximum number is five. Here, the maximum number is six. And here, the maximum number is seven. So the problem wants us to return a vector of, of a vector of, of the same size of the array. No, not the same size of the array. Uh, it should be, the size of the array minus k plus one. So the vector should should have the the maximum integer for every sliding window. Okay, that's it. Uh, we are given the array. Let's call this not nums. Let's call it a. Easier. And k, which is the size of the sliding window. And here for the constraints, the array length is up to ten power five. And here, this is a key for for some possible solution, okay? Uh, so the number would go up to 10 power four. So it's from negative 10 power four up to 10 power four. So the numbers are not, are not very large. And the size of the array is normal, 10 power five, okay? And of course, k is from one to the array length. So do you have any initial ideas? How can I calculate this? Or just any any idea if it's easy or hard, brute force, anything? Yeah, uh, Ahmed, uh, I have a brute force uh, solution I could think of. I can have two for loops, uh, one uh, i and j. So i will start from a zero and j will be i. And uh, the j will be till a k, like um, less than k. So mm -hmm. I will take maximum of uh, this number, like in this case, it will be three. So take the maximum and uh, initialize to the output within this uh, window, what is the maximum value? Yes. So basically two for loops I'll be having and one with will be starting from zero and second will be uh, initialized with i, j is equal to i. Mm, okay, and how will you move the window? Um, so I think uh, we, we can initialize J with I, I. Yeah, automatically it will be since it's a for loop, uh, every time um, J will be uh, J will be like from one to three, uh, I'll calculate the maximum and the outer for loop will be I, right? So I'll move I with one, uh, one extra. So again, it will start from second to uh, till three. Um, I think you complicated things here. I think a, a more straightforward brute force should be like you initialize, not making two for loops, but initializing i and j uh, with i equals to zero and j equals to k minus one, right? So this is the first window. And then making just one loop and each time increasing j and increasing i, that's it. Uh, so I can there? use the while loop uh, uh, with yes. i uh, not equal to uh, yes, while j is more than n. Yeah. So uh, we could just this is um, a straightforward brute force solution. So yeah. while j is more than n, then at at the first, so we will not we will not increase the window before calculating the max. So we <laughs> calculate the max. 
okay um, and then j plus plus i plus plus we'll make this until j is smaller than n that's it okay did you get are you getting it now yes okay so how so could you say oh, sorry yeah so what is that n n is a uh, uh, number of elements is it length of the array length of the array okay yes number of elements is 10 power 5 okay so, so uh, uh, are we saying this while loop helps us to calculate the complete array or for the first uh, sliding window? No, this while loop uh, gets every sliding, every every window. So but, this while uh, loop is the actual sliding window. Okay, where, where are we actually breaking that condition saying that for first K rows, first K columns? Columns? Uh, yeah, so the k equal to three, right? In this case, so where where are we breaking? Where are we considering that condition? So in this case, k equals to three, right? So we initialized here i equals to zero, j equals to k minus one, which is two, right? And then I'm saying that this loop will continue until j is smaller than n, which is here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So J is more than seven. So when J reaches eight, we will break this while loop. So J will will go from two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I will go from zero, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, yes. So the values, the values here will be I, zero and two, one and three, two and four and so on, until we reach five and seven. And for the next time, uh, I will be equals to six, G will be equals to eight. We will not enter this loop because we have finished our sliding mode. Okay, everything's clear. So J is, uh, it should not be hard coded to two, it should be uh, K minus one, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, and I should be hard coded to two. Let me just do something quickly. That. Okay, let's continue. So, so here I said the most straightforward solution. Um, and actually, this is this should be my, uh, our official solution. So we will do something like this. We will we will actually. Uh, go through every sliding window, but how we calculate the maximum? That's the point. So sliding windows are are of O of n. So we have O of n sliding windows. Okay, but each window could be very large, up to k. Again, can you tell me how can we get the maximum out of each sliding window? So here is a different problem here. We want to calculate the maximum for each i and j here. So any ideas, if it's slow or fast, anything, say how can we calculate the maximum for each sliding wound? I uh, think uh, I have some idea, but I don't know if it's right or not. Uh, we can yeah. use a EQ and uh, maintain the highest uh, uh, maximum value and what are the uh, Elements to the left of the window will be deleting that and maintaining the highest value. Mm -hmm. Sorry, can you say that again from the beginning? Uh, but sorry, uh, okay, sorry. We'll, we'll maintain a DQ of okay. size, size equal to K. Okay. And whenever uh, and uh, we'll be uh, 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 calculating the maximum out of that and that the numbers to the left of the maximum window doesn't matter for us. So. Will not keep that in. 
hmm. and only the numbers which we are adding if it's the maximum, maximum. Hmm. then we'll remove all the elements to the left otherwise we keep on adding until that the window is filled so whenever we are uh, selecting the window we'll add that one and verify with very best number hmm okay so what you are saying is let me think in that a uh, bit on minute so so at the first window you will put all the numbers in in one deck and then at the next window you will check the last the maximum at this deck and then remove the minimum from it and then add this this new element right uh, uh, yeah the minimums which are to the left of the window because that doesn't matter for us and uh, mm. if you are removing from the right uh, for example if the i have a one maximum value and if i remove that again i have to calculate from the minimum number so the uh, right numbers i'll be uh, retaining that from the highest value and the values i'll be removing such that if i want to calculate the highest value from the remaining i have a lesser number oh you are speaking so fast but uh, let me rethink that in one minute uh, uh sorry could you please explain what you are asking like what is the actual uh, problem you are uh, now trying to get the answer okay so i just i'm making i'm just doing a sliding window here from i to j and i want to calculate the maximum number between i and j that's it so i and j are indices in the array and i want to oh. get the maximum number between i and j okay uh, so it's actually a problem right yes that's a problem okay that's okay. okay got it okay um, let me think in your solution uh, i think it's correct but uh, this is not my my the solution that got uh, in my head at the first time okay so let me think for a minute and i think it's right uh so here what you're saying is that are you with me the uh, yeah the, okay so here let's have this array for example okay and our window is of size 3 so our dq at the first time will be containing 2 4 6 but I don't want to make it like this, okay? Our window at the first time will be containing two, four, three. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, and the DQ will be containing two, four, three, okay? Now, DQ so, will be containing uh, uh, four and three because I'll remove two. That uh, doesn't matter for us. Yes, Highest so I put four. Okay, yeah. so I'll put two at first, and then I'll put four, but first remove two, right? And then yeah. I'll put three. Um, but but three is smaller than four but i'll not remove it because it could be used yes. at another window yes yeah i'll have uh, another variable called highest so that will be storing what is the number after this like uh, i'll be storing that as a three uh, sorry can you say that again slowly uh i'll be having an other variable variable to okay. monitor the next highest value so in this case it's four and three so anywhere okay. to the whatever i am having to the left will be the highest value and the, another variable will be there to monitor which is the next value. So hmm. that variable will be three. So uh, when it keeps on going, for example, if I remove three, I need another one to replace. I, if I remove four, I need another value to replace. So at that time, I'll be using that. Okay, so as I understood, so my highest here should be four, uh, highest no, variable. Three, no, three, three. The next highest, next I want to say next highest why uh, because uh, whatever i am having having the left side is the highest value by default because i am removing all the other hmm. values okay okay so next highest uh, but what next highest would benefit us for so the, uh, the second uh, highest yeah. if yeah if you go to the next value like uh, seven we'll put seven here okay uh, so, so the, at the next sliding window, we'll put seven here, right? But we will, we will remove three first. Uh, yeah, three and four are removed. 
yes, three and four removed. So I don't see the point in this oh, variable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That cannot be this here, right? Here. Okay, so it's not important here. Okay, so for the next window here, I'm standing here, I put seven. Okay, um, I'll print seven, of course, and then I'll encounter one, then I'll put one. Uh, yes, for yes. the for the next window, okay. Yes. Then Still I'll seven. okay. Then I'll go to the next window. Then I'll put two. Yeah. But first, remove one. Okay, that's good. And then I'll put three. But then remove two. Okay. Uh, no, no. If you, if you no, no, no. If you put three over there, our window is only to the maximum of three elements. Right? You should remove seven. So you should be monitoring if the index value is within that uh, window that oh eight, yes eight. so i should make sure if that left element is with my window of course yes okay so so here seven is with me so i will not make anything to be seven two but at the next time i remove two and put three but seven yeah. is not is not with me so i remove yeah. it again yes okay uh, Okay, then I'll go to five and then move three and put five. Okay, that seems a very good solution. And it's, yes, that's good. Uh, and my solution was was another another thing and it's it's more obvious than this solution, uh, but it's somehow slower, it's of n log n. But this solution should be, do you know the complexity of this solution you just said? Oh, okay. Only one time we are traversing, this is more of n. Right, okay, that's very good. So this solution works in of n. Oh, yeah, one question, right? Instead yes. of using a dq, can you use just a q here? Uh, sorry, say again. Uh, is there any advantage of using a dq here? Or can't we just use a q? Yes, that it's the same thing. So dq is the is the main is the main container and q is is part of it. So we will use q in C. Okay. Q, just normal Q. That's it. Okay. Uh, it's the same thing. Okay, so let me first explain to you the... So that's very good. This this solution is correct and it's fast. It should pass the limits. Okay. Uh, but, but let's say the other... Uh, of n log n first and explain how can we calculate this maximum easily. So here, uh, jumping from the brute force solution, which is, uh, let's say the straightforward brute force solution, which is going for every window and calculating the maximum. And how we calculate the maximum in an easy way, we just loop from i to j and then have a variable storing the maximum between i and j. That's it. Okay, so we'll have a variable here called max, into max, and will be equals to zero. And then a loop starting from i and j, loop from i and j, and then max equals to max, so loop from i and j through k, okay? So we'll have k is, uh, is our variable that's looping from i and j, okay? And max will be equals to max a of k and max, that's it, okay? And then we'll just um, push, push this max to the vector that we are returning, okay? So this is the brute force solution. We loop from i and j, and then maximizing our value and then push this value, okay? What is the complexity of this solution? So the complexity of this solution is O of n squared. Okay. And this is n into k. Uh, sorry, say again? Uh, n into k, right? K. Complexity will be k. Yes, yes, it's n times k. Um, and the general, general complexity is n squared because k could go up to n. k, but it's n k. Uh, so this cannot pass because, because uh, it would go up to like roughly 10 power 9 operations or something or 10, yeah, 10 power 9 operations or 10 power 10 
minus something. So this cannot ba pass. So let's think of an easier version. Uh, not easier version, sorry. Uh, let's think of a more efficient version. So we'll not change the idea here. So we just look, we just uh, moved through every sliding window. And for each sliding window, we want to calculate this max very fast. So we want to calculate the max for each sliding window uh, the fastest way possible, okay? Uh, do you know how can we make to answer this particular problem? So this particular problem, how can we calculate the maximum between I and J very quickly? Mm. We can make uh -huh. uh, the maximum for the first sliding window. And we can what? Uh, sorry, say again. Uh, we can calculate the maximum, maximum for the first sliding, sliding window. window. Yes. And then store it in a variable with max okay. variable. Okay. And, uh, and then, uh, like as our sliding window moves, hmm? we need to also make sure that the max is not exist on the first element of that sliding window. So maybe I think we need to store to max the first maximum, max second maximum. Um, I got you, but it's not quite the case. Because uh, so here at our first sliding window of size three, we'll have a maximum of four. We we will have it stored, okay. And when we move to the next element, we'll have three, but it's not important. Let's make this two, okay. So our maximum will be three, and then when we move to Okay, let's make this two again. And what should I do here? Uh, okay, yes. So here at our first sliding window, the maximum is three. And my second sliding window, I'll have three and remove three. So no, nothing, nothing matters. So it here's uh, three, but for the next sliding window, I encounter two. So I should remove three from my sliding window somehow. But uh, but if I remove the three, I know that I have another three in my sliding window. So how can I keep track of that? So I don't want to remove three from my sliding window because I have three again. So I, sh I, could, I could count the occurrences of every character I encountered. And, and here, when this nums I come, uh, here when this, uh, these low boundaries come handy, we have nums I until 10 power four. So we could, we could store in some array called uh, frequency. Mm, frequency, okay. And when we pass, uh, so for the first sliding window, Let's make this called FR. Frequency stores the frequency for each character we have at this sliding window, okay? So for the first sliding window, which is 2, 3, 2, we will have frequency of 2 equals to 2, right? Uh, frequency of 3 equals to 1. So we'll have 2, 2 times, and 3, 1 time, okay? When we move to the next sliding window, we will decrease the frequency of the left element by 1. So frequency of two would be decreased by one. So it will be one. And the right element will increase its frequency by one, right? So frequency of three is increased. So I'll be maintaining this frequency array through all the windows. And when at some point I have frequency of X equals to zero, then I want to remove it from my sliding window. But uh, now I, I knew uh, each character is uh, occurred how many times? But I want to calculate. But uh, still, the problems, uh, still the problem. I want to calculate the maximum very fast from one sliding window. So I could use C plus plus set. So set. So set in C plus plus is a container, uh, and it calculates 
it makes everything in oh, most of the things in log n time in off log n okay so it gets uh, set i could get the maximum from it in off log n so set is actually a container that stores values in a sorted so they are sorted and there are no duplicates in it okay so for set if i put uh, if i inserted let's dot insert one if i inserted one uh, five times set will have one only one time okay so set it's just a set that have uh elements that are sorted and there are no duplica duplicates and we can and we insert in o of log n so if we insert any value in the set it takes o of log n time and they are all sorted at every time okay and i could erase any element in o of log n again and i could get the last element in the set and the first element in the set in o of one so I could get the smallest value or the greatest value in the set in only O of one, okay? So that uh, that's we will we will solve our problem with set. So it's a binary search tree, right? Yes, it's binary search tree. Yeah. Um, uh, for, for this problem, can we use a, 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 a what's it called segmented tree? Yes. So that also be right? Yeah, we can use segment tree, but it's uh, it's it will be complicated for 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 this easy task. So we are just using set. Okay, Sigma, we don't have to use segment tree. Okay, and for segment tree, we will we will add another another complexity. So for segment tree, we will we will look up the maximum in O of log n complexity, right? But in set, we will look the maximum in O of one on. Okay. Uh, segment tree works, but set is easier here. So, so here uh, we will maintain a set that have only the elements of our sliding wind. Okay, so at the first time, the set will have two, three, two, and uh, not two, three, two, of course. We'll have two, three, and then when I go to the second window, I will not remove three. Uh, I will not remove three if not the frequency of it zero okay so if i am here at the second window i'll add the frequency of three to be two and the set will be the same as it is okay and i'll move to the third window so i'll i'll decrease the frequency of three by one and increase the frequency of two by one that but the set will be the same okay and then i'll go here so eventually for for this particular array array the set of the sliding window will be two three at every time but uh, let's six two four five so when we encounter when we are here so frequency of three will be one and two will be one and four will be one okay and and the set will be something like this and when i go to the next window i'll decrease frequency of three by one okay so now frequency of three will be equals to zero, right? Because I, I remove three, so frequency of it will be zero. So if I found at any point that frequency of X is zero, then I'll just remove X from the set, okay? And I said, the, uh, uh, I said that we can remove any element, we can erase any element in, from the set in O of log N, okay? So I'll just say S dot erase, erase. Three, that's it. Okay, and three will be erased, and then I'll add frequency of five by one, and the set will be something like this: two, four, five. And at each at each window, at the beginning of each window, I'll just print the last element of the set. Okay, that's it. Uh, do you all understand that solution before going to code? Okay. Um, also, you'll understand it better while coding. So here we have the array. Let's initialize n will be equals to a dot size 
Hmm. Okay. And we want to make the frequency array and we want to make the set. Okay. So at first here, set in this. And the frequency array would be an integer. Should be of size. So frequency array uh, will take numbers until 10 power 4 only, right? Because I'm asking about frequency of any element. But uh, I cannot say a negative index, right? So so to make this work, I'll, I'll increase the value of each element by 10 power 4. That's it. Okay, so frequency array, the size of frequency array will be 2 times 10 power 4 plus 1. So 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Uh, why 1? Because I have, I ha I'll have exactly 2 times 10 power 4 plus 1 places uh, 2 times 10 power 4 plus 1 uh, numbers, different numbers. Why? Because I have... Uh, from negative from negative 10 power 4 to 0 these these are 10 power 4 numbers and from 0 to 10 power 4 these are another 10 power 4 numbers and you have 0 so these are 2 times 10 power 4 plus 1 numbers okay so whenever i i encounter any value in this array i'll just increase it by 10 power 4 and it will not it won't matter in any um, it won't matter in the answer because they are just I'm just calculating the maximum over them. So if I increased uh, some window by by a constant, then the maximum will remain as this. Okay. Okay. That's good. And I want to initialize the frequencies to be zero. <laughs> and I'll do what I said here. I initialize I. I equals to zero, J equals, but I'll not make it quite like that. Make something better. So I'll calculate the first window separately. So I calculate this first window separately and then get the maximum of it, which is three, okay? And then loop from the element after the first window and then add it to the window and remove the last element from the window. And then I'll keep adding, removing, adding, removing. So I'll loop from this element until the last element. So I'll make it something like this. Uh, yes. So here I store element equals element mx equals to zero. So the first window will be starting from zero until k minus one. Smaller than k, smaller than k, i plus plus. And then, I want to insert to the set A of I, right? And I want to add to the frequency A of I, but I said that I'll, it will be plus um, 10 times 10, uh, 10 power 4, okay. So frequency of A of I plus 1 E4 plus plus, that's it, okay. And mx equals to maximum of mx and a of i. So here I I just got the first window, which is from zero to k minus one, and then added each and every element in this window at the set, and then increased the frequency. I didn't decrease anything because I'm just at the first window. I increased the frequency of each element by one. And I increased each element in the frequency is increased by 10 power 4. Okay, so whenever I'm accessing any element in the frequency, it's increased by 10 power 4. And then I'll, I'll have the maximum, uh, the maximum will be equals to maximum between a of i and the current maximum. Okay, so at first, I make a vector corresponding to our answer. So I want, for this function, I want to return a vector corresponding to the maximums for all sliding windows in order, right? So for the first sliding window, I'll push to the answer 
the MX that I calculated so far. Okay, and from now on, it's it's easy. So I just start from the the first element after the first sliding window and add it to the sliding window and then remove the last element and so on. So I start from k because I ended at k minus one. So for int i equals to k, i is smaller than n. I plus plus for int i equals to k plus plus. So now I want to add this element to the frequency and to the set. So I'll make the same thing here. So I just added this element to the set and to the frequency. But I want to remove the element that I left behind me. So here I calculated the first window. But for the second window, I added the negative three here. And I should remove one. Okay. So the index of the element that I remove it should be i minus k. Okay. So the index of the element is i minus k. So here is my i minus k. So I'll make frequency. Uh, someone is asking what is one e four. So one is of one e four is ten power four. Okay, but in a double four. One e four is ten power four. Okay. Why do you have to add that? Uh, sorry, what do you what are you saying? Why do you have to add that? Why do I have to add that? Okay, yeah. so I have to store the frequency of each element in the frequency array, right? But I have the numbers from negative 10 power 4 to 10 power 4. So how could I store the frequency of negative 3, for example? I cannot access frequency of negative 3. So the array stores from 0. The, starting, the index starts from 0, right? I could use hash map, but arrays are faster and better. So I just added added one e4 to every element okay. uh, so to make everything possible okay uh, now now i just added the element the new element to the set and to the frequency and i want to remove the last element the first element in the last window okay so i just it will be at index i minus k exactly so i'll just at first i'll decrease the frequency of a of i minus k and of course, plus 24 it goes. So I'll decrease it. And if I, after decreasing it, if it's uh, the frequency of it is zero, I remove it from the set. That's it. So if frequency of A of I minus K plus, plus one E4 equal to zero, then s dot erase a of i minus k. Okay, did you get that? But if not, so if the frequency of a of i minus k is not zero, then I will not remove anything from the set because I know that I have this element another time in my wheel. Okay, so here I've gone through each sliding window and, and the set is maintained for each sliding window. So to access the maximum element at the set, so the set is sorted from the first to the end, and I'll access the pointer at the, at the end position at the set, and this will be our maximum, okay? So I don't have to store actually maximum. So answer, I'll push back the last element and the set, okay? So to accept, access the last element in the set, so it will be s dot uh, reverse iterator of the beginning. So it will be the last element, okay? I don't actually know how these reverse iterators work, but uh, s dot r begin is the same thing as s dot end minus minus but and s dot begin is the same s dot begin is the same s dot begin plus plus is the same thing as s dot r end okay so here this is the last end okay but this is an iterator so this is a point so this is a reverse iterator to the last exactly the last end so i want to access the point that's it okay so as at each time i'm pushing 
s dot or begin and everything should be okay here we can dance uh, everything is clear in this solution do you want to ask anything oh sorry i'm i'm not from I'm c++ not from right now so mm -hmm. i just want to ask you about mm -hmm. why push back why we want to I mean, can't we just store? Okay, so uh, you're asking about the vector here, uh, why I'm no. pushing back? Yeah, I mean, can't we just store that in a vector array, basically? Uh, so, in, so we can store that in a normal array, but here the function, the function for our problem uh, mm -hmm. returns a vector, okay? So a vector is a list, okay? Vector is list in Java. It, I think it's called list array or something like this. Uh, do you know lists? List? Yeah, I'm from Java background. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so vector is a list. So okay. it's, it's like array, but uh, with with dynamic uh, size. Okay. So push, pushing back is adding element at the left. Okay. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, here I'm returning a vector of the same size as a, and I'm pushing back the maximum element at each time. So, any other question? Also in Java, like uh, the removal of element from set is like order of one actually. If you know the index. Removing is, uh, yes. So removing and adding is amortized constant. So okay. it's O of one, yes. Okay. And here it's O of one, okay. So time complexity in this case is like is order of order, right? Is what, sorry? Is order of n. Time complexity for this problem, for, for yeah, the whole problem? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. No. So I said that set works in O of log n. So set uh, inserts and deletes in O of log n. So I'm inserting at each time, I'm inserting an element in the set and I'm deleting an element from the set, I'm erasing. So it's of n log n, okay? Okay, let me try this. Let's check if I have any bugs. So if someone is asking on the chat, uh, please talk to me a voice because uh, I won't be able to, to look at the chat frequently. Okay. So you have problem with your mic. Let me give it to you. I don't understand your question quite well. So now, since I deleted the MX, so I don't want to store something, okay? I have everything maintained in the set. So someone is asking about frequency array. So frequency array, I said, corresponds to the frequency of each element. That's it. So frequency of X equals to the number of times X occurs in this sliding window, okay? So if I'm at sliding window between I and J, then frequency of X will be equals to the number of times X occurred between I and J, that's it. And we are accessing each each uh, each element in the frequency array by 
by by indices in the frequency array okay perfect okay let's let's test it okay i'm not finding load Hmm. Error in line 10. Frequency of A5. Okay, so 1E4 is double, but it should be okay. So I'll make it just one with four zeros. Okay, uh, the expected output is correct. Let's submit. Okay. So before going, so I saved this solution. Before going, before leaving, I want to, as I said, we want to implement the faster solution, which is off n. So the person, the guy who said to me, the this solution of off n, keep with me. I'll I'll be writing this solution with you. Okay. So let's let's do the solution that is off n is of, of n complexity okay so are you here oh yeah. oh yeah okay so first we should make so let's explain first the the okay let's write the code and then we know what it does when you are working so we are doing q of integers uh, we need a d for that so q is the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah.